In this video, I'm answering viewers' questions on highly effective therapies for multiple sclerosis. Don't turn away, because that starts right now. Hey. Howdy! Thanks for learning about MS with me, Aaron Boster. I'm the founder of the Boster Center for Multiple Sclerosis, where we care for families impacted by MS from around the globe. I love answering your YouTube questions, and the other day I had an absolute blast doing an impromptu live stream, Ask Me Anything MS. Unfortunately, I didn't get to all the questions. And in this video, I'm going to be answering viewers' questions about highly effective therapies for multiple sclerosis. So let's jump in. Joan asks, what is the difference, benefits, of B-cell versus T-cell focused disease modifying therapy, i.e. Ocrevus or Casempta versus Tysavri? Joan, that is a fantastic question. And you are listing out for me some very highly effective therapies. It's kind of like discussing the subtle points between the benefits and risks of a Lamborghini and a Ferrari. You might have a predilection for Lamborghini, I might prefer Ferrari, but let's face it, they're both amazing, amazing fast cars. And in a similar vein, Tysabri, Ocrevus, Casemta are amongst the most effective disease-modifying therapies currently available. So if you closed your eyes and randomly picked one, you're picking an outstanding medicine. Now, the reality is we don't have head-to-head -head data comparing Tysabri against Ocrevus or Casemta. Heck, we don't even have data comparing Ocrevus and Casemta. And so it's very hard to say with extreme authority in class one evidence, this one does better than that one. What I can tell you is yes, mechanistically they work very, very differently. And unfortunately in 2021, we MS neurologists are not yet smart enough to tell you, aha, you'll respond better to a B cell driven therapy or aha, we really need to block T cells. I do believe that in the future, we'll make decisions like that. At present, we're left trying out what seems like the right fit for you and then seeing how you respond. If you randomly pick Tysabri or Ocrevus or Casemta, you've chosen a highly effective medicine and then we're gonna monitor you to make sure that it's working. And the monitoring is gonna happen no matter which one you pick. Now this is important because if you're taking any one of those medicines and not having attacks, not failing the litmus test of life, your neurological examination is not changing, and your MRIs show no new or enlarging spots, let's keep doing that. Of course, we have to make sure that you tolerate the therapy, that you're comfortable with the safety profile, and that it's affordable, and that the risk profile is something that you can live with. If we've accomplished those goals, let's keep on keeping on. And if not, that's always a point in time when we may consider other options. The next two viewer questions surround stem cell transplantation. Tabara asks, do you suggest stem cell treatment for any person with MS? What groups do you advise stem cells for? Minaj writes, hi doctor, I'm from Jakarta, Indonesia. Do you know of anyone that has done mesenchymal stem cell IV in injections in Panama, Cayman? And what has been their experience? What do you think of this treatment? Thank you both for those questions. For starters, let's level set some education. Stem cell transplantation is not a medicine, it's a procedure. Ostensibly, you take out somebody's stem cells and then you murder them. You give them lethal doses of chemotherapy or radiation to remove their immune response. Then you give them back their immune system before they succumb and hope that it takes. And in doing so, you've rebooted the immune response. In my mind, it's kind of like switching out your motherboard. So your computer's not doing well. Maybe in this example, your motherboard is corrupted. So you remove it and you put in a new one. Now, stem cell transplantation is a highly effective therapy. It's been studied now for a couple decades in MS. Early on, when we were studying stem cell transplantation, it was morbid, meaning it would result sometimes in death. And fortunately, I don't think that there's been a stem cell transplantation death in MS in many, many, many years, which is wonderful. I still, however, believe that this therapy is not yet prime time, and I absolutely do not recommend it outside of a controlled clinical trial. I also want to point out the concerns I have about stem cell tourism. Right now, you can travel to an exotic place like Mexico or India or recently Chicago and pay someone a bunch of money and they'll swap out your bone marrow. And there's not a lot of controls. There's not a lot of supervision to know whether what they're doing is appropriate or safe 
or the right protocols. And I have received several patients that have returned from uh, some other place where they've supposedly had a stem cell transplant. And it's a little bit scary <clears throat> receiving someone and not exactly knowing what they had done, what the protocols were, or what the next steps are. I'm not poo-pooing stem cell transplantation. I think that it is important that we study it. And I do think that there's a cadre of patients that ultimately will probably benefit from stem cells. But presently, I do not think it's prime time. And presently, I would not recommend participating in a stem cell program outside of a controlled clinical trial. Thank you both for asking the question. Ashchild1986 asks, how do you feel about rituximab? I love rituximab. Rituximab is a chimeric anti-CD20. So in English, it's a monoclonal antibody, very similar in many ways to ocrelizumab. In the United States, it's not FDA approved for MS, although it has been studied in both relapsing MS and PPMS with some evidence that it works really well. I have used it off-label in many patients with MS, both PPMS and relapsing MS, and I find it to be a very well-tolerated drug. I don't think it's as well tolerated as the humanized version, ocrelizumab. And so given my druthers, I tend to gravitate towards ocrelizumab, but I do not think rituximab is a bad option at all. And I certainly do consider it to be highly effective. To learn more about MS treatment philosophy, click the video that's on your screen right now. My name's Aaron Boster, and thank you for learning about MS with me. Until my next video, next Monday morning, or my next live stream, or the next time I see you at the Boster Center for MS. Be safe and take care.